Hello, everybody! Today, I have something really, really amazing for you. You know, sometimes, or actually quite often, I like to relax, sit back and enjoy some jazz, of course. I like to brew myself a really, really strong cup of coffee. Uh, and I sit back in my armchair <laughs> and uh, try to enjoy the uh, beautiful music. But suddenly something happens and I kind of throw the coffee in my face and and um, yeah, it, it's a disaster, uh, really. And what just happened? The drummer played one of these really kind of out in a good way fill-ins. And uh, that's why I want to share three of these fill-ins with you today. Uh, okay, let's get right to it. I'll present them right now. We have three amazing fills. The first one is played by Rodney Green on a record uh, from saxophone player Dana Stevens called Reminiscent from 2013. Uh, and the song is Seems Like Yesterday. Uh, the second fill is Clarence Penn, the amazing jazz drummer, uh, from saxophone player Tim Warfield's uh, great record, Eye of the Beholder, from 2012. And lastly, the film you heard me play already is from the one and only uh, Jeff Tain Watts, one of my absolutely biggest inspiration inspirations for my jazz drumming. Uh, from Michael Brecker's record, Two Blocks from the Edge, on the song By George. And this film, the Jeff Ten Watt film, actually happens during the song's uh, melody, not during the solos, which is really cool. Okay, um, these fills have one thing in common. Uh, to create this kind of out feeling, you simply do one thing, or simply and simply. But uh, yeah, the, theoretically, it's quite simple. You change subdivision. If you play like in the Jeff Tain Watts example, uh, if you play like a strong triplet beat right before the fill, he starts the fill in 16th notes. Uh, the Rodney Green fill is also 16th notes. The Clarence Penn fill is some other stuff, but it's so amazing. Uh, okay. Okay, okay. This uh, amazing Rodney Green film uh, goes like this. Uh, it's during the piano solo. Uh, Aaron Parks, the piano player, uh, plays over a, a kind of pedal, uh, one chord, and uh, actually the four, three bars before the fill. Uh, I included here because I think it's so amazing as everything in this video is it's, it's amazing really uh, it's a kind of a 3-4 phrase in 4-4 four, four. goes like this triplets one two three four Amazing. And then the fill. Uh, 
And the fill, as I told you before, uh, another subdivision, 16th notes, with a small, small rest in the beginning. So, one, two, three, four. Mm. <laughs> Okay, what happened? 16th notes. 3, 4, mm. And then six tuplets in the end. With a kind of a real accent on the last one. Okay, so we have mixed subdivisions. Yeah. I'll do this one really slow a couple of times to the background. Okay, this Clarence Penfield, now we're talking. This is so, so, you know. Uh, it starts with uh, a kind of, uh, so, uh, what do you call it? Some stuff before. Uh, one, two. <laughs> if I do it very slowly, one, two. And then we have the bar of the fill. Starts pretty easy with some eight notes. Then we have this grouping that I talked about in my Elvin Jones video I did a while back. The grouping nine over two. Nine strokes over two. Uh. And, and uh, the thing you have to be aware of is the quarter note triplets. Sounds like this if I do them on the floor tom and keep the quarter notes in the bass drum. Okay. Okay. Uh, in my Elvin Jones video, I, I do this to a click as well. Uh, so check that one out. Uh, the thing Rodney, uh, Clarence Penn do here is he played this rhythm. That's his nine strokes. So the quarter note triplet is actually one, two, Okay, uh, so we have one, two, uh, and a quintuplet at the end. With the uh, kind of anticipation on the symbol on the last quintuplet. So.
Okay, everybody, let's talk about this awesome Jeff Tainwaltz film. Uh, the song is very triplety. Um, and right before the film, uh, Jeff Tainwaltz plays something like this. Not at all uh, exactly that, but very triplety. And the thing is, uh, that this fill is based on 16th notes. Uh, and that's why it sounds so out. Uh, okay, you can see it now on the screen. Uh, it starts with this. The first rhythm. One, two, three, four. Pa, pa, pa. Play it on. With one more time. One, two, three, four. Ta ta ta. One, two, three, four. And then on the off beats. So after. Ta 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 pa pa. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. One, two, three, four. And then another offbeat. Play it on right and snare drum. So we have one, two, three, four. And then straight eight notes. At least something like straight eight notes. If you remember what I talked about a while ago this interpretation stuff. So for me, the easiest way to transcribe with this was actually straight eight notes. On floor tom, high tom, floor tom, snare drum. So we have, from the beginning, one, two, three, four. I'll, okay, I'll try to do it with the hi-hat on the quarter note. That's it. After these straight eight notes, we have the same rhythm as the very first thing. Ta ta ta. And then the same rhythm again. So. And on this crash, the, uh, the, this hit, the piano plays as well. So, from the beginning, I will not do this with the hi-hat now, because I will probably screw it up. Okay. One, two, three, four. And then, on the last eight note of the fill, an accent. And then, in the bar after the fill, this is very important, the melody is on the offbeat. Pa pa, one two three four. Pa. So Jeff Tain was play something like uh, the whole thing. One two three four. Back to triplets. I'll try to do this one time. Uh, to my uh, background slowly. <laughs> 